All right, I'm going to try to do this one a bit quicker. June 30th, 2015 is today. All right. Now, the classifications for stars that I have are population one, or plasma, population two, are mostly gaseous, population three, are mostly liquid and solid material, and population four, are dead stars. This is much different than the Big Bang creationism model, where population one, or whatever stuff they made up in the 30s, you know, we can, we can ignore all that. It's, anyways, okay, you have a plasmatic star. A lot of the magnetic fields in the star are in the surface. Okay? Plasma is very violent, unruly, it just does whatever it wants. It forms sunspots and creates these giant magnetic fields that loop around inside the surface of the star only. But there's probably no global magnetic field when you get really big stars like blue giants and really, really, really hot ones, where they're just so big, magnetic fields can't reach across the entire star, just too big. Then you have cooler stars like the sun, still too big, the plasma's magnetic fields and the sunspot's magnetic fields can't reach towards the center of the star. And then you have magnetic fields, they start reaching, start touching in the center and aligning a lot of the material. This is near where the transition from one to two would be, where the material goes from plasma to gas. As well, there's something magical that happens in the center. It's when the iron starts clumping together. And now what iron does is once it's clumped together in the center of the star, it acts as magnetically permeable matter. And its purity facilitates its permeability as well. Now, its permeability means basically how much it can magnify a magnetic field, okay? It increases the flux density of the, of the field. And the flux density meaning, say you have a magnet right here, if you increase the flux density per unit area, it would be like a whole bunch more. The flux density is increased. So this is higher flux density, this is lower flux density. Now, the permeability of vacuum the way it, how much flux density would increase is one mu. That's the symbol they use is that weird little backwards Y. I don't know why. Permeability of impure iron is around 60, meaning it can increase the permeability of, or it can increase the magnetic flux by about 60. Higher refined iron sitting around 8,000. And the permeability of perm alloys, don't ask me why. Pick that one is about 1 million or 10 to the 6. It means that it increases, can increase the flux density, increases the strength of the magnetic field. Now it has a magical thing. When you start increasing the flux of a magnetic field, you can stabilize plasma. And the plasma will start moving along where there is least, uh, where it basically become, it starts to get control. The, the, the center core starts controlling the magnetic field and making it as a global magnetic field instead of all over the place. That's the important part I want to get to across to you people is that the core formation is essential for the evolution of the star because it facilitates the plasma to cool down and to arrange itself into a differentiated core, which is obviously the process of planet formation. But basically you have that and over time, and then you have what's called retentivity or reminiscence, meaning how well that magnetic material can sustain its magnetic field over time. Basically, when you make a magnet, you have a piece of metal, you run electric current through it, and boom, you magnetize it. So depending on how high its retentive nature is, how well it can memorize the magnetic field will determine how magnetic it remains. Now, in the writing of that book, they weren't, it was written in, I think, 2002, so I don't know if they were that crazy about neodymium back then, or their article, or if the guy remembers neodymium to write it, but neodymium has a very high re retentivity, of course, alloyed with other elements than iron does. But in this case, iron and nickel are the retentive matter meaning the star will sustain its magnetic field as it evolves, and the retentivity diminishes, or it will lose its magnetic field over time, meaning that possibly the Earth's core is magnetic, 
from earlier stages of star evolution. And over time, they will eventually die out and become a dead world like Mercury with no magnetic field at all because the retentivity of the uh, iron nickel is, well, not as high as it could be. So, basically that's that in a nutshell. Uh, the most important part is that core formation facilitates the star cooling at a reasonable uh, rate and allows all the plasma to differentiate itself. And basically it cracks the whip on the plasma. It can align it better. But uh, there you go. I don't know what to call this talk. I guess I'm just going to think something crazy up. All right.